Okay, happy Hanukkah day two. Happy Hanukkah day two. Hello guys, second day of Hanukkah with Team Ihambi. We are so excited to be able to add you guys in our daily um, holy day routine. So today we are going to be talking about the second day of Hanukkah and the light that was shine that the light that is shined on this specific day. Mm -hmm. So to start us off, mommy. Yep, so we did a recap on Hanukkah, the meaning of it, the desecration of the temple 200 years before Christ showed up, and how uh, the pagan world defiled something that was holy, and it was the rededicating of the holy temple of God so that it could be in service to God. And so day two, what we reflect on, on how we can rededicate our lives to God in a way that's serious and sober, but yet fun and exciting, is to follow the light through scriptures. Yes. So yesterday on day one, we learned that God said this. Go ahead and read it from Genesis chapter one. Nice and loud for us. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. The earth was with form, without form, mm -hmm. and void. void and darkness mm -hmm. was mm -hmm. over the face of the mm -hmm. deep and the mm -hmm. spirit. spirit of God was hovering over the face of the waters. And God okay. said, let, let there be light. Let there be light. So that is the first, the very first part of light. The very first one. In so every, every situation that we walk into that's dark, without void, without form, people don't know who they are. There's an identity crisis all over the place with people changing names, genders, all, all sorts of things in order to figure out who they are and what their journey of life looks like. And so we're here to bring order, to bring love, to bring light into a, a world that's very confused. That was day one what we focused on. Now day two, we're going to see where light comes next. On the second day of Hanukkah, our true God gave to us light from Adam and Eve. Daddy, do you want to read verse 26? Huh. Verse 26. Genesis chapter 1, verse 26. Then God said, let us make man in our image after our likeness. And let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the birds of the heavens, and over the livestock, and over all the earth, and over every creeping thing that creeps on the earth. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God, he created him. Male and female, he created them. So we know that we're created in the image of God to do good works and to do good things. But what we found out on later in the chapter, a couple chapters later is that because Adam listened to the voice of his wife, who ate of the tree which God commanded him not to, then now the, now the world is cursed as a result. We, found out, we find out later in the book of Romans, Paul teaches us that through this one man's, thank you, Sayla, that through this one man's disobedience, a curse has fallen over the whole entire world as a result. And so Adam took that light, and what did he do with the commands? What did he do with the instructions that God gave him? Yes, that's true. He blew it out. That's right. He took the light. He knew the instructions. He knew the commands, but he followed man. He followed another human being instead of following the truth of what God's word said. So there might be a lot of times where you're at work and you think, oh, I know I'm not supposed to do this, but my boss said to do that. Or I know he's not looking. Let me just do that or do this. And when you start conniving and doing things in our own strength instead of following God and, and taking him exactly at his word and doing exactly as what God has told us. Amen. And so as we light day two, we're going to rededicate our, our, our mindset, our lifestyle, our workplace, our home space, our relationships to God, and we're going to do our best to surrender everything fully to his will, following only his instructions and not man's instructions. Shining our light everywhere that we go. Yep. Yeah. So Daddy's so. going to light the hamash, the servant candle. Oh, so quickly. Yep. And who remembers why the, the taller candle gets lit first? Because, because the, the, the candle that is taller is um, Jesus, so he's the key of the tent. We are the servant candles. So it's like um, us, all the servants. So we love, we love, it's like giving light to all of them. It's like giving power and light. So the light of the light, the servant candle has to be lit first, and then it lights day one which is light coming into the world through bringing order. And then day two, humans taking the light that God has given them and blowing it, doing it in our own way instead of the way that God has said. And so let's lift up our servant candle once everyone has it lit. In, or lit. Be careful on the 
Thank you, Esther. Let's not play. Fire's not our friend. We should lift it up. Fire is not my friend, so we're going to be by him. Okay, so we're going to lift it up. We're going to light day one. Day one. God said, let there be light. Let there be light. Okay, that's good. That's good. Wow. I'll do it with you. And then day two. But doing things the way that God has asked us to do it. Uh oh. Oh, there it goes. Light of the world. You stepped out into darkness. That probably I did it. Let me. What are you saying no about? Here I come to worship. Here I am to bow down. Here I am to say. Today will be filled with light. Yes, yeah, say goodbye, Bye. guys. Bye-bye.